ಸ್ಥಾಪಕಾಯ ಸ್ಥಾಪಕಾಯಧರ್ಮಸ್ಯಧರ್ಮಸ್ವೇ ಅವತಾರವರಿಷ್ಠಾಯಮಕೃಷ್ಣಾ ನಮಃ ಅಸತೋ ಮಾಸದ್ಗಮಯ ತಮಸೋ ಮಾಜ್ಯೋತಿರ್ಗಮಯ ಮೃತ್ಯೋರ್ಮಾಮೃತಂಗಮಯ ಓಂ ಶಾಂತಿ 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 ಲೆಟ್ ಅಸ್ ಆಫರ್ ಅವರ್ ಸೆಲ್ಯೂಟೇಷನ್ಸ್ ಟು ಶ್ರೀ ರಾಮಕೃಷ್ಣ the embodiment of all religions the supreme god incarnate let us pray to him to lead us from the unreal to the real to lead us from the darkness of ignorance to the light of knowledge to lead us from death to immortality we have been studying gospel of sri ramakrishna today's topic i have chosen the paramahamsa paramahamsa in fact one of the visitors was asking what is the meaning of the quotation there about the holy mother bust there in the chapel there it is written tanno ham sap prachodayat below the monogram that verse that sanskrit quote is there he was asking what's the meaning of that hamsa tanno ham sap prachodayat and i told that means may we realize that brahman that's the meaning it is really so paramahamsa means supreme brahman and there is another meaning also ordinary meaning ordinary meaning means paramahamsa means an ascetic of the highest order there so many ascetics are there at different different levels depending upon their realization purity and character paramahamsa means who is well established in the divine qualities who identifies himself with the whole universe and he holds responsible for every being in the universe that's why it is declared in the scriptures the supreme brahman is veritable father and mother so the real father and real mother this concept has come from brahman himself because brahman has created the universe so he is he should be the father who else can be and he is operating this universe he is tendering he is tending is extending his affection and concern about the continuation of the universe continuation of the creation so who else but mother be so much concerned about the creation so the same brahman who is the father of the universe the same brahman is also the divine mother of the universe so there are two in one that means there is absolutely no difference between 
the father and the mother in the highest sense i am talking about if you read sri ramakrishna's life there are many passages where sri ramakrishna declares that there is no difference between myself and holy mother in the same way if you read holy mother's life she also has mentioned there is no difference between me and sri ramakrishna in fact when sri ramakrishna attained maha samadhi when he left his mortal frame holy mother made a remark i lost my mother probably will be surprised how holy mother is addressing sri ramakrishna as mother who was her husband but because it is a fact so the manifestation of brahman he is through these qualities manifesting the divine qualities at the same time behaving like human beings <coughs> it is really very extraordinary to be human at the same time be divine so these special type of manifestations are aware of their human quality and also well aware of their divine dimension shri ramakrishna himself has explained the characteristics of paramahams in the gospel in his life also you will find how he declares in front of the scholars and pundits that one who was sri ramchandra in treta yug was incarnation of brahman and who was sri krishna in dwapar yug the incarnation of the brahman now in this age that brahman has come in the manifestation of sri ramakrishna and in this unique incarnation what is this special quality we observe that is any body belonging to any religion can come to shri ramakrishna at the same time retaining their own faith and religion that is the uniqueness of shri ramakrishna that is the manifestation of impersonal personal he is personal at the same time is impersonal he is personal to whom devotees choose him as their personal deity of adoration at the same time he is impersonal to those who adore formless aspect of brahman that means sri ramakrishna is both sagun brahman and nirgun brahman both brahman with attributes and brahman without attributes so that is a unique incarnation where he has revealed himself as brahman the substratum of the whole creation at the same time most lovable father and mother of the universe 
So as, as long as he retained his human manifestation, he would always cherish the ideal that he was a child of the Divine Mother. 100% he was like a baby. So you could see most fantastic, fascinating guilelessness of the child in Sri Ramakrishna. The most advanced soul looks like a baby. That's the indication. One doesn't have to show any miracle power. One doesn't have to show any occult powers or siddhis to convince others about the, his realization or his spirituality. Just guilelessness of the face itself is indication of the to what extent the person has realized the truth. And Sri Ramakrishna referring to the characteristics of Paramahamsas, he says in the Gospel, in the case of a Paramahams like Shukadev, very great saint who was Brahmagyani, who taught Srimad Bhagavatam to Parikshudraj, who would be meeting with death within seven days by the bite of a serpent. So before he would cast off his body, he wanted to hear Srimad Bhagavatam. So Sukadeva himself came to teach him. So the whole Bhagavatam was taught to him in seven days. One of the greatest scriptures of our Hindu tradition. So referring to Shukadeva, Sri Ramakrishna says, all karmas, all puja, japa, tarpan, sandhya and so forth, they drop away. In this state, a man communes with God through the mind alone. Sometimes such a person may be pleased to perform outward activities for the welfare of mankind. But his recollection and contemplation of God remain uninterrupted. So though he is conducting all external activities, all the welfare human service programs, his mind is always constantly on the Divine Supreme. It was about 8 o'clock in the evening, Sri Ramakrishna asked Mahimacharan, one of the devotees, to recite a few hymns from the scriptures. Mahima read the first verse in the Uttara Gita describing the nature of the Supreme Brahman. He, Brahman, is one, partless, stainless, and beyond the ether, without beginning or end, unknowable by mind or intelligence. Finally, Mahimacharan came to the seventh verse of the third chapter, which reads, which reads, the twice born, that is Brahmin, worships the deity in fire. The Munis, that is the sages, ascetics, contemplate him in the heart. Men of limited wisdom see him in the image. And the yogis, who have attained same-sightedness, behold him everywhere. No sooner did the master hear the words, the yogis, who have attained same-sightedness. Immediately, Sri Ramakrishna stood up and went into Samadhi, his arm supported by the splint and bandage. Speechless, the devotees looked at this yogi who had himself attained the state of same-sightedness. To the Divine Mother, Sri Ramakrishna addresses, Mother, thou hast done away with my worship. Please see, Mother, 
that I don't give up all desire. Mother, the Paramahamsa is but a child. Doesn't a child need a mother? See how he talks about it. Therefore, the ward the mother and I am the child. How can the child live without mother? In another place, Sri Ramakrishna says, one succeeds in if one develops a strong spirit of renunciation. Give up at once with determination what you know to be unreal. Once, Sri Ramakrishna says, when I was seriously ill, I was taken to the physician Ganga Prasad Sen. He said to me, I shall give you a medicine, but you must not drink any water. You may take pomegranate's juice. Everyone wondered how I could live without water. Is it ever possible? But I was determined not to drink it. I said to myself, I am a Paramahamsa and not a goose. I shall drink only milk. A Paramahamsa is one belonging to the highest order of monks. The word also means, Hamsa also means swan. There is a popular tradition in India that a swan can separate the milk from the mixture of milk and water. It is said that a secretion of acid turns the milk into curd or yogurt which the swan eats leaving the water. <coughs> and then Sri Ramakrishna gives instruction. You have to spend a few days in solitude. If you but touch the granny, there is a game of hide and seek. There is a particular game. If you touch the granny, you are released from the game. So if you but touch the granny, you are safe. Turn yourself into gold and then live wherever you please. That means, first you realize God and divine love in solitude. After realizing God and divine love in solitude, one may live in the world as well. That's why I asked the youngsters to stay with me, Sri Ramakrishna says. Why he was fond of youngsters? Because they will develop love of God by staying here a few days. After that, they can very well lead the life of a householder. Point is, they should develop love of God. That's the important point. Some may attain the state of a Paramahams as a result of practicing years of spiritual discipline. But Sri Ramakrishna was a Paramahamsa, sprung as it were from the earth like a natural emblem of Shiva. Shivalinga also is not created. It does sprout itself from the earth. Nobody knows from where he has sprouted. Born of a, born of a pious Brahmin couple, on Friday, 18, 1836, at Kamarpukur, a village of Bengal, in 1856, Sri Ramakrishna became the priest of the Kali Temple at Dakshineshwar. Without any formal education of scriptures, he transformed the basalt image into the living goddess, nay, became one with her through the intensity of his love. The words of wisdom that came out of his lips stunned even scholars. <clears throat> like a swan, his tongue secreted a juice which separated milk. What is the milk? Divine virtues like devotion, dispassion, etc. That is the milk. Separated milk from water. What is the water? Evils like lust, anger, etc. That juice was the name of the mother. He drank no ordinary wine, but his soul was always drunk with the wine of everlasting bliss. 
He kept his cup filled to the brim with it by constantly calling on Divine Mother. Seated on a wooden cot with a blissful face and half-closed eyes, he welcomed all from diverse religious traditions. To all he offered this intoxicating elixir of immortality. He did not go for school learning education. Very important point. Paramahamsa Dev had realized in his youth the futility of mere bread earning education. Nor <coughs> had he read any scriptures. Yet he unraveled the profound and subtle mysteries of spirituality. He pointed out that the essence of the Gita was one got by repeating it ten times. Then it becomes taggy, which means renunciation. The essence of Vedanta was that Brahman alone is real. The object of study was to be able to churn the butter from the milk of the mind. It was to enjoy the sweetness of the Lord like a bee and to shun the festering source. The object of study was to cultivate love and devotion for God. It was in love's elixir that he delights and could not be grasped through the Vedas or Tantra or the six darshanas. Only a devotee could enjoy the bliss of communion. A mere gani was like a pot without any rice put on fire, who only argued. Sri Ramakrishna's experiences have surpassed even the Vedas. How could the mere pundits with their little book learning match his knowledge of reality, his purity, his renunciation? They quoted glibly from the scriptures, but they were still attached to lust, money and power. And the Paramahamsa's purity was that of a child who cannot distinguish between a man and a woman. The purity of these few Paramahamsas is all that holds the world together. They do good by simply being and they know it not. They just are. This is the quotation of Swami Vivekananda in his complete works. The purity of these few Paramahamsas is all that holds the world together. They do good by simply being and they know it not. They just are. The pundits fought over their dues while he did not touch even a thread. They were filled with the pride of their scholarship and high caste. But Sri Ramakrishna was so humble. They had only a vague idea of Samadhi having read it in books. But Sri Ramakrishna would go into it at will. He had to force his mind to stay on a human plane to bring light to suffering humanity. They had only heard and read about God, but Sri Ramakrishna had seen him face to face, talked and sported with him in various bhavas, in various moods. He had also realized him as pure light in his inner consciousness. The Paramahamsa is like a child. He cannot distinguish between a stranger and a relative. Sri Ramakrishna says in the Gospel. And we see that it was the devotees who enjoyed a special relationship with him. They had become his own people as if made of the same substance like father and son. How he told them to go and wash their faces and make it in the Panchavati. On a cold wintry night, Sri Ramakrishna asked them to stay in his room so that they will not catch cold or cover their heads if they must go back. He himself came to Balaram's house on a hot summer day, but he would not allow Balaram, his disciple, to go out in the sun and get a peer for him through his mouth, though his mouth was drying up due to cancer in his throat. Many a times he went to Calcutta to the houses of his household devotees so that his young disciples could come to meet him at those places. The relatives did not allow them to go to Dakshineshwar. Probably they were apprehensive that their sons might under the spell of the mad worshipper of Kali, whom people call a Paramahams, 
give up their studies and ruin their worldly prospects but their guru graciously led them beyond this maya of endless births and deaths beyond this prison house of the world to that realm of freedom where there is eternal peace and bliss how poorer the world would have been had swami vekananda become a attorney and swami shardananda a doctor <laughs> the devotees too relished neither toys nor sweet meats their only joy was to see and hear the nectarian words of thakur the beloved companion of their souls they are all in all towards the end shri ramakrishna's body was reduced to a mere skeleton he couldn't swallow even this semi solid farina pudding which ran out of his mouth he could if he so wanted give up his body in samadhi he could have done that but he kept on bearing he kept on bearing the unbearable pain fearing that the devotees would weep alone in the streets of kolkata such was shri ramakrishna's love for his devotees at the same time filled with the milk of human kindness he radiated tender love for all beings he insufferably the the insufferable the insufferably arrogant hazra lost no opportunity to harass the paramahams hazra criticized him for his love for the young aspirants for his social and religious unconventionality still still this critic hazra was blessed by shri ramakrishna's vision in his last moments and even this person who criticized shri ramakrishna he was also liberated the trouble maker hazra was there to add to the play and so a part of divine mother's leela towards his end people flocked to the paramahamsa hankering after peace or thirsting for spirituality he was so ill that he could hardly speak forgetting all about the doctor's prohibitions and his own suffering shri ramakrishna guided them and bathed them in a flood of peace the paramahamsa was like a child who is not particular about social conventions he comes out naked before strangers many a times getting up at dawn the devotees saw shri ramakrishna singing or dancing completely naked the embodiment of pure light and consciousness that he was what garment could cover his naked soul how peerless how brilliant was the glory of the soul that through him shone just covered with flesh for a support no wonder he was unaware at times to cover the body the covering of the soul with another cloth what marvelous manifestation of soul power that encircled the globe within 10 years of his passing away swami shardananda wrote in the great master which book you are getting shortly there he writes from time from the time of his tantric sadhana the orifice of his sushumna was fully opened and his nature was converted into that of a boy unlike the ordinary paramahamsas shri ramakrishna never practiced remaining naked it naturally came to him which is gradual loss of body consciousness he doesn't want to be naked but the point is he was not conscious of the body paramahamsa wise Shri Ramakrishna had realized the timeless nature of awareness without beginning without ending for that exalted being the barrier walls of time and space could not miss the view at times he transported us into the dwapar yug by assuming the attitude of radha gone mad with shri krishna's divine beauty whose fault is it my minds are his beauties in three worlds i see nothing but my beloved krishna says shri ramakrishna or through his heart rendering heart rending cries o krishna where art thou 
another time to 15th century and all nadia shook under the waves of gauranga's love once at hari sabha shri ramakrishna the paramahamsa occupied the seat of sri chaitanya and entered a profound samadhi seeing that extraordinary smile on his effulgent face devotees felt that the master had become completely identified with the great lord that he was not then at all consciousness of the great distance of time place and other things which separated his bodily and mental existence from those of sri chaitanya one of the western scholars lexicon has said in his book we are enjoying simultaneously every place of pilgrimage right here in the master's room that is at dakshineshwar if you visit that place you also feel the same way he says we are in jerusalem we are in mecca we are in benares we are in lhasa just by sitting in the room we can feel that way the illusory barrier to the past drops away we become the blessed companions of lord buddha lord krishna the divinely transfigured jesus so lexicon has written a book meeting with sri ramakrishna in that book this quotation is there which is mind anchored in the region of eternal consciousness the paramahamsa appeared like a man just awakened from sleep who becomes aware of himself and his surroundings once in an ecstatic mood he said to the devotees i still see you but i feel as if you have been sitting here for forever i don't recall when you came or where you are sri ramakrishna says like this in the gospel another time he said to rakal i have been here many days when did you come so like a paramahamsa Sri Ramakrishna was always cheerful, as is as if his soul were swimming in the ocean of Satchidananda. He would dance at the sight of a cloud, or go into ecstasy of joy over a rainstorm, or listening to the concert. His was the exalted state of a Paramahamsa, desireless, generous, without vanity, beyond pleasure and pain, praise and blame. cleanliness and uncleanliness he was like a small child who sees darkness all around unless his mother is nearby and yet he was like the akasha all pervading and untouched by the suit of the world he was innocent of the art of concealing the divine mother afraid lest this guileless and foolish child of hers should give away everything to the people of kaliyug so ignorant and averse to meditation gathered him into her bosom may the lordly swan of the limpid lake of my mind guide us and protect us this phrase is coined by swan vekananda may the lordly swan of the limpid lake of my mind guide us and protect us thank you page 844 master said to vaishnava stop that sizzling noise when butter containing water is heated over a fire it makes that sound if a man but once tastes the joy of god his desire to argue takes wing the bee realizing the joy of sipping honey doesn't buzz about any more what will you achieve by quoting from books the pandits recite verses and do nothing else what will you gain by merely repeating siddhi you will not be intoxicated even by gargling with the solution of siddhi it must go into your stomach not until then will you be intoxicated one cannot comprehend what i am saying unless one prays to god in solitude all by oneself with a longing heart dr rakhal arrived to examine sri ram krishna the master said to him eagerly come in and sit down the conversation with the vaishnavas continued master said 
man should possess dignity and alertness only he whose spiritual consciousness is awakened possesses this dignity and alertness and can be called a man futile is the human birth without the awakening of spiritual consciousness so understand the importance of your human life just don't unnecessarily waste it by unnecessary entanglements in the world by fighting and quarreling and all sorts of things human life is invaluable but people are using it as if it is very cheap not knowing they will not be again be born as human beings human birth is obtained only through very good meritorious deeds if a person continuously does bad deeds again he will be he will have to be born as animal which is tortured by the human being anyway one should be aware of what he is doing what he is thinking and what he wants to achieve in this life that's all so shri ramakrishna says first give your utmost attention for realizing truth after realizing god you can be in the world does matter so first priority is to realize god not as the worldly people say oh we have to enjoy the world let me realize god in when i when i am 90 years old 90 years old you are realizing god there's a funny part of it thank you any questions to ask if you come to shri ramakrishna you have to be practical in all your actions in establishing your character then you really belong to shri ramakrishna even though you don't know it that's another beauty because shri ramakrishna is impersonal the same shri ramakrishna may be lord christ to some the same shri ramakrishna may be lord krishna to some shri ramchandra to some like that is both impersonal and personal not only that he is beyond both of these this vigyan very good no question means you have all accepted what i have said thank you <laughs> chant the name of the lord and his glory unceasingly that the mirror of the heart may be wiped clean and quench that mighty forest fire worldly lust raging furiously within own name stream down in moonlight on the lotus heart opening its cup to knowledge of thyself o soul drowned deep in the waves of his bliss tasting his nectar at every step bathing in his name that bore for weary souls various are thy names o lord in each and every name thy power resides no times are set no rites are needful for chanting of thy name so vast is thy mercy how huge then is my wretchedness who find in this empty life and heart no devotion to thy name o my mind be humbler than a blade of grass be patient and forbearing like a tree take no honor to thyself give honor to all chant and sing in the name of the lord o lord and soul of the universe mine is no prayer for wealth or retinue the playthings of lust or the thrice of fame as many times i say may be reborn grant me o lord a steadfast love for thee a drowning man in this world's fearful ocean is thy servant o sweet one in thy mercy consider him as dust beneath thy feet how how i long for the day when an instant separation from thee o lord will be as a thousand years when the heart burns away with its desire and the world without thee is a heartless void prostrate at thy feet let me be in unwavering devotion neither imploring the embrace of thine arms nor bewailing the dwell of thy presence though it tears my soul asunder o thou who stillest thy hearts of thy devotees do with me what thou wilt for thou art my heart's beloved thou and thou alone o lord lead us from the unreal to the real lead us from darkness to light and lead us from death to immortality may all be free from dangers may all realize what is good may all be actuated by noble thoughts may all the joys everywhere may all be happy 
may all be free from disease, may all realize what is good, may none be subject to misery. May the wicked become virtuous, may the virtuous attain tranquility, may the tranquil be free from bonds, may the freed make others free. May good be dead all people, may the sovereign righteously rule the earth, may all beings ever attain what is good, may the worlds be prosperous and happy. May the clouds fall rain in time, may the earth be blessed with crops, may all countries be freed from calamity, may holy men live without fear. May the Lord, the destroyer of sins, the presiding deity of all sacred works, be satisfied. For he being pleased, the whole universe becomes pleased. He being satisfied, the whole universe feels satisfied. <laughs>